the next example is also somewhat involved. Uh, it consists of a uh, we have uh, an apparatus here which is nothing but a piston cylinder apparatus but with a membrane uh, or a diaphragm or a partition in between. So, this uh, partition is rigid so it does not flex it is rigid very thin and it does not store any thermal energy ok. So, there is no energy change uh, the energy change in the uh, diaphragm may be neglected. So, it is rigid which means that the volume uh, of the compartment uh, containing nitrogen remains constant throughout. So, the air is initially at 500 kPa 473 Kelvin and the nitrogen is at a higher pressure volume uh, initial volumes are given. So, we now compress the air slowly until the final pressure of nitrogen uh, is 1100 kilo Pascal ok. We are asked to calculate the work and heat interaction for the air its final temperature. So, for nitrogen the molecular weight is 28 and gamma again is 7 fifths. So, we can calculate C V for nitrogen and R for nitrogen. So, given based on the given information the mass of air may be evaluated from the equation of state to be uh, 0 0.055 kilogram and the mass of nitrogen to be 0 0.107 kilogram ok. And as I already mentioned nitrogen undergoes a constant volume process. So, we can evaluate the final pressure I am sorry the final temperature uh, since we already know the final pressure the final pressure is given volume is known. So, we can easily evaluate the final temperature to be 519 Kelvin. So, if I take uh, the system to be air plus nitrogen plus partition we can evaluate first law like this ok. Remember the partition uh, does not store any energy there is no change in energy of the partition. So, delta E is equal to delta U of air plus delta U of nitrogen ok. So, this is equal to delta U of air plus delta U of nitrogen. Of course, the fact that the uh, we are neglecting the energy stored in the partition is not a uh, is not a major uh, uh, disadvantage okay, or a limitation because if uh, properties of the partition are known then we can easily include that in this expression as delta u partition. So, it is not a limitation of the analysis we are simply saying that for uh, this particular problem the partition is quite thin. So, the energy stored in the partition may be neglected, but that is not a limitation of the in the analysis itself ok. So, uh, no uh, heat is supplied the entire cylinder is insulated. So, we take Q to be 0. So, if you uh, uh, rewrite delta U as uh, m C V delta T we get this expression. Now, if you substitute the numerical values we get the uh, work interaction for the for this system to be minus 5479 ok that is negative. So, an external agent is pushing the piston down compressing the air ok. Now, work interaction for air itself is just minus 5479.61 all of it is actually work interaction uh, for air because the nitrogen is undergoing a constant volume process. So, the work interaction is 0. Now, if you apply first law to a system that contains the air alone ok. So, notice that initially we took the system to be air plus nitrogen and we calculated the work interaction for the air. Now, we are going to take the uh, air alone as the system and apply first law. Notice that if you take air alone as the system there is displacement work for the air and there is also heat interaction between these two. No work interaction because this uh, part of the system boundary for air does not deform ok. No work interaction, but there is a heat interaction between the air and the nitrogen as the air is compressed it gets heated up and there is a transfer of heat across the partition ok. So, the partition is not given to be insulated only the piston and the cylinder are given to be insulated. So, uh, so, we apply first law to a system that contains the air alone delta E is equal to delta U and Q is not 0 W is also not 0 ok. So, W is W. So, in fact, uh, strictly speaking we should have written this as Q minus W air. So, W air has already been calculated ok. So, the heat interaction for air may be evaluated like this. So, that is minus 3653.71 joule. So, this is the amount of heat that is transferred to the nitrogen across the partition. 
of course, we could also have obtained this uh, by considering uh, the nitrogen alone as a system. We could have, uh, for instance, done this. So, for this system, work interaction is 0 because no part of the system boundary deforms and there is a heat interaction from the air to the nitrogen across the partition. So, if you apply first law to, uh, uh, to nitrogen, we would have obtained delta E equal to delta U equal to Q minus W. W is also 0 in this case because the volume remains constant. So, we know the initial delta U for the nitrogen is this. So, we can evaluate Q for nitrogen as 3653.71. Okay, so, this is Q for nitrogen is 3653.71. Okay. So, Q for air is then the negative of this which would be minus 3653.71 same as what we obtained before. We move on to the next example, which uh, looks like this. Air is contained in an insulated rigid tank of volume 1000 liters. So, we have an insulated rigid tank like this. Um, uh, so, we have uh, the volume is given to be 1000 liters, which is nothing but 1 meter cube and it is also insulated. So, so it looks like this valve on the top of the tank. So, we have a valve here on top of the tank. So, that is uh, open and the air is allowed to escape slowly into the atmosphere until the pressure reaches 100 kilo Pascal at which point the valve is closed. We are asked to calculate the final temperature of the air in the tank and the amount of air that escapes. And you can see here that this process is an unsteady process. Okay? And uh, what we are going to do is use the system approach to uh, you know to do the calculation you may recall that we looked at this particular uh, situation uh, during our discussion of uh, system definition so we have already defined a system for this and we will use that system to carry out the analysis in this case okay so uh, a system appropriate for this was shown before you may recall uh, that system uh, was simply so this is the system at the beginning of the process and uh, so this is the system at the end of the process okay so this is at the beginning and this is at the end so uh, if i apply first law to this system at an intermediate instant so we apply the differential form of the first law we get de equal to du Delta Q is 0, there is no heat interaction between the system and the surroundings, but the system boundary deforms, so there is displacement work which is PDV. Now, uh, the working substance is air, so I may write du as mcv dt, and this may be rewritten as minus mpv uh, mp dv. Okay? So, if you go through the uh, algebra, you can finally show that. The process undergone by the air, fully resisted adiabatic process undergone by the air is described by this equation T v raised to gamma minus 1 equal to constant. So, final temperature of the air may now be evaluated because the final pressure, the initial pressure are both known. So, we get this to be 155 Kelvin. So, the mass of the uh, air that is initially in the tank may be evaluated from the equation of state like this. The mass finally in the tank may be evaluated uh, like this. This is remember, uh, this is same as mass of the system that we considered. So, this was the initial system. Now, at the end of the process, it occupies the entire vessel. Okay? So, mass of air contained in the system may be evaluated like this. So, that is 2.235. So, the mass that escapes comes out to be 9.312 kilograms. Okay, so, by uh, identifying the system properly at the beginning, we can uh, do the analysis quite easily and it is very, very straightforward. But the uh, complexity lies in identifying the uh, system. Okay, so, we have to look at the process as a whole and then identify an appropriate system. So, you need the critical aspect here 
is that at the end of the process, the air uh, after the air that has left, if you uh, if you leave out the air that has left, at the end of the process, the the remaining air occupies the entire vessel. So, we take that as our system and then say that initially the system looks something like this. In this lecture, uh, we will first look at uh, one um, example uh, or the final example uh, illustrating application of first law to uh, uh, ideal gases. Then we will move on to examples involving two phase mixtures. So, this is the last example. So, here uh, as you can see, we have an insulated piston cylinder arrangement. There is also a spring. Uh, which is just above the piston. So, we connect the cylinder to a line in which nitrogen flows at 800 kilo Pascal 27 degree Celsius uh, through a valve. Okay. Um, the stiffness of the spring is given, cross sectional area of the frictionless piston uh, is also given. Uh, so, now the valve is opened and the nitrogen from the line is allowed to flow uh, inside the uh, cylinder until the pressure uh, inside the cylinder becomes the same as the line pressure, at which point the valve is closed. We are asked to determine the final temperature of the nitrogen inside the cylinder and the amount of nitrogen that enters the cylinder. And we will, uh, uh, this is also an unsteady problem and uh, we will uh, solve this problem by defining an appropriate system. Okay. So, later on when we uh, uh, discuss control volumes, we will see that uh, these problems can also be uh, analyzed by using the unsteady approach in a control volume. But for now, we will use a system uh, to solve this problem. A system that is appropriate for solving this problem looks like this. So, this is the amount of uh, nitrogen that actually enters from the uh, from the line. So, let us denote this mass as m line. So, initially, uh, so this is uh, shown at some instant. So, initially it contains a certain amount of nitrogen, but the spring does not exert any force uh, on the piston at this stage. So, this is the initial amount of nitrogen in the uh, cylinder. This is the amount of nitrogen that will eventually enter the cylinder. So, we have denoted this as m line and this mass is denoted as m1. The mass in this part of the system, we uh, choose to neglect. We think, uh, we assume that it is very small. So, we do not worry about the mass that is in the line, uh, I am sorry, that is in the pipe that connects the line to the cylinder. So, we have uh, uh, the system in the final uh, position and it looks like this. Notice that it contains the same amount of mass. So, m2 is in the final position is equal to m1 plus m line and we are asked to calculate uh, m line and the final temperature of the nitrogen in the cylinder and the cylinder is open to atmosphere at the top. So, this is p atmosphere. Notice that other definitions of the system, uh, other definitions of uh, proper systems are also possible. For instance, we could also define a system which includes the piston, in which case the change in energy of the piston will be accounted for in the form of uh, total energy, whereas in this case we will account for it in the form of displacement work. Okay? So, other uh, definitions are also possible, uh, we can use this one and proceed with the analysis. So, we take molecular weight of nitrogen to be 28. So, we can calculate specific gas constant and the Cv. So, the amount of uh, nitrogen that is initially in the cylinder is uh, given as uh, point, uh, I am sorry, uh, may be evaluated as 0.2245 using the information that is given in the problem. Now, if I uh, look at the uh, uh, the cylinder at any instant, let us say that you know we, uh, um, so at any instant, so if I imagine uh, any intermediate instant, the uh, piston is located here. So, the spring is exerting a force on this. So, if I apply a force balance to the, uh, to the piston, uh, we have pressure force uh, from the nitrogen which is being exerted in the upward direction. We have atmospheric pressure which is being exerted in the downward direction and we have uh, spring force which is in the downward direction plus the weight of the piston which also acts in the downward direction. So, if I uh, uh, do uh, a force balance, then we have pressure inside the cylinder at any instant is the sum of the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the weight of the piston which is mp times g divided by cross sectional area of the piston plus 
the uh, uh, plus the um, uh, the pressure due to the force exerted by the spring. So, the force exerted by the spring is kx. So, if I divide that by the cross sectional area, I get this value. Uh, if I rewrite x in terms of the um, uh, volume of uh, nitrogen in the cylinder, I can actually write it like this. Okay. Notice that this is uh, volume of N2 in the cylinder. So, we are <coughs> told that when the pressure inside the cylinder reaches the line pressure which is 800 kilo Pascal, the valve is closed and the process is stopped. So, we can actually substitute for that uh, in, this, in this expression and determine uh, the final volume of nitrogen to be 0 0.2 meter cube. So, basically we substitute uh, the final pressure in this expression and obtain uh, the final volume of nitrogen to be 0 0.2 meter cube. Okay. So, we have already uh, uh, defined all this and uh, at the final state notice that the mass in the final state we already said is equal to m1 plus m line because that is a system. So, we may apply equation of state uh, to uh, this state and write p2v2 equal to mrt. This is how uh, this is how it looks. If we apply first law to the system, then we have delta E equal to delta U. Notice that our system uh, does not enclose the piston, otherwise the delta E term would have become delta U plus potential energy change of uh, piston. Since we do, uh, since we are since we have chosen not to include the piston, uh, the total energy of the system is just internal energy. There is no change in potential energy. There is no change in kinetic energy. So, we may write delta E equal to delta U equal to Q minus W. Since the piston and cylinder are insulated, we take Q to be equal to 0 and delta U uh, may, be, may be split into two pieces, delta U for this part of the system plus delta u for this part of the system which is inside the cylinder. So, delta u for this part would be m line times cv times uh, final minus initial plus this. Okay. So, if you look at this, so this is what we have written m1 uh, cv times t2 minus t1. So, this is the mass that is initially in the cylinder and the change in internal energy of uh, this mass may be written as this this is the mass that is initially in the line and the change in internal energy of uh, this mass may be written as m line cv times t2 minus t line and that is equal to the displacement work. No other form of work is present. So, this is just the displacement work that is integral p dv. Okay. So, if we um, uh, evaluate, notice that uh, the displacement work as again may be written uh, as a sum of uh, two terms. One is a displacement work in this part of the system boundary. Remember this part of the system boundary deforms and finally becomes 0, but that is at constant pressure equal to p line and this part of the system boundary also deforms as the cylinder moves up. So, the displacement work term has uh, two uh, contributions. One is from the line, another one is from the cylinder. So, this is the contribution from the uh, cylinder. This is the contribution from the line. So, final volume of the of that part of the system which is in the line is equal to 0. So, we can then write it like this and since we know uh, the pressure at any instant in terms of volume, we may actually uh, go through and complete this uh, integration and this is what we finally get this is w. So, if we substitute this expression for the displacement work back into this, we get the following expression finally. Okay. If you uh, do this, uh, rearrange uh, the little bit of algebra, right. So, we get this. Now, we have also used equation 1 from above which is uh, this one here. So, we have used that also and uh, finally, we get an equation that looks like this. So, all the uh, known quantities are, are on the right hand side. So, if you plug in the um, uh, values, known values, you get m line to be uh, 1.283 kilogram and from equation 1 above, we get the final temperature to be 357 Kelvin.
ok. So, the uh, uh, the important uh, uh, things to remember in this uh, particular problem is the definition of the system ok. So, we have already seen examples like this when we talked about system and how to define a proper system. So, notice that the definition of the system in this case is uh, crucial. It makes the analysis somewhat simpler because uh, things are very easy to identify. Delta u for the system you can easily see is uh, composed of uh, delta u for uh, this part of the system plus delta u for this part of the system. Similarly, Displacement work again is composed of uh, two parts, one from here, one from there. This is at constant pressure, so it is easy to evaluate. This also we were able to evaluate in closed form <coughs> because we were able to write the pressure at any instant in terms of the volume. So, um, this concludes uh, our examples uh, on application of first law to systems uh, that involve ideal gases ok. So, uh, we next have or we, we will next go through a few examples uh, which again uh, require you to do a first law analysis of uh, given problems using systems, but now the working substance is a two phase mixture either water and water vapor or refrigerant and refrigerant, liquid refrigerant and refrigerant vapor.